So, Abby, tell me your thoughts on the afterlife. I believe that there absolutely is an afterlife. Um, Let me give you a scenario. Recently I heard about a 26 year old, he was on his way to work and he stopped at a bus stop and three men came up to him, robbed him, beat him up and shot him. And as he was laying there dying, he knew he only had minutes to live so he called 911 and he spoke to the operator for half a minute to a minute I would say. If that happened to you, what would you say to the operator? What would be important to you? Um, don't let this change your perspective on life. Everything is everything. Um, the negative things don't mean to give up and make life meaningless. Keep fighting and keep creating purpose and meaning. That's what life is about. So that's what you'd say is your last words? Spread love. Spread love. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Do you believe in God's existence? I believe that we're all God, so yes. You believe we're all God or we're made in God's image? I believe that we're all God because, I mean, we would be made in God's image in that point. So is that tree, right? No, that tree hasn't got a sense of right and wrong or justice and truth. It hasn't got the ability to respond to its maker. It's just a tree. It can't think like we think. We're, well, re we're reasoning beings. Actually, that's to your understanding. Plants have their own communication completely. Um, you talk to the trees? I don't talk to the trees. The trees talk to each other. There's literal scientific research that proves that. What do they say? They communicate if, you know, there's danger nearby. If tr other trees are getting cut down, they actually put out vibrational energy. Even, I'll even apologize to my phone, but be speaking rudely to it, because I'm just like, everything that we create holds energy. And the way that you exist in life and interact in life is such a reflection of that energy, that afterlife, that before life, that everything. Do you believe in God's existence? I, I, I don't mean... Are we all made in God's image or we're gods? I mean, do you believe in a creator of all things? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, something had to create something. What do you think of the Bible? I think that the Bible is a lovely interpretation of a pathway to enlightenment. And I think that a lot of people have created a lot of community through it. Um, it's a little hard for me to see sometimes with anything. I can't say that uh, the Bible or church or anything like... I guess you can't really associate church with the Bible because the Bible is someone's interpretation of Jesus's life who wasn't even really known. Like no one even knew who Jesus was when he was alive. So the fact that we have used this man's life and the interpretation of this man's life to, you know, search for rightness and forgiveness and holiness is... For some people, I guess, but I do think that it's a bit stagnating. I think that we all should strive to be Jesus, not to get acceptance from Jesus and forgiveness from Jesus. You mean to be like him? <laughs> I mean, whatever people think he's like, you know? Well, when he was being nailed to the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Yeah. That's love. Yeah, and that's what we should all strive for. If everyone loved each other, there'd be no wars. Absolutely. No one would be in prison. There'd be no judges, no, no juries. There'd be no police because everyone would love each other, not steal or rape, commit adultery. We'd all do that, which is pleasing to other people. We'd love each other as we love ourselves. So let me change the dynamic a bit. Can you handle that? I'm going to move away from your intellect, which we've been addressing, and speak to your conscience. Can you handle that? I can handle that. Do you think you're a good person? I try every day. What do you measure yourself with to know if you're good? <sighs> That's a very complex question. I think that in the moment I'm always striving to be good, but life is about learning and you're bound to hurt people. And it's about, I don't think it's about goodness. I think it's about awareness and the ability to understand if something is productive or if it is hurting yourself and others and, you know, the flow of life. What do you think of the Ten Commandments? They're a good standard to judge yourself by. I think that they're a fantastic judgment to stand by. Oh, really? So <laughs> let's get to the ninth. You shall not lie. How many lies have you told in your life? So many. What do you call someone who's told lots of lies? A liar. So what are you? A liar. How do you think you're a good person being a liar? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever stolen something? Yes. It's the eighth. So you're a thief? Yes. Thanks for your honesty, Abby. Um, have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? 
Mother's name is a husband. Probably have, yeah. I honestly, I, in all honesty, I do believe that I've probably broken most of the commandments. That I don't really judge goodness by following commandments. I judge goodness by learning lessons and being able to be reflective and forgiving and understanding because that's what the world is. Yeah, well, let's keep learning. When you use God's name in vain, you're using it, equating it with a filth word, beginning with S, human excrement. Hit your thumb with a hammer, you could either say that word to express how you feel, or you could say the name of God or the name of Jesus Christ. Call blasphemy, very serious, and the Old Testament's punishable by death. Appreciate your patience with me, Abby. Um, Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in the heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Absolutely. Okay, here's a summation. I'm not judging you, this is for you to judge yourself. You've told me that you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. So this is where we're going with this. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments, we've looked at four of them, on Judgment Day you're going to be innocent or guilty. I think that I'm going to keep on reincarnating until I've learned all my lessons fully and just live through love, and I'm looking forward to every lesson because that is the beauty of life. We are not born to be perfect and without sin. We are love, and love is learning too. So would you be innocent or guilty? I don't think that that's really how things would be looked at. I'm not looking in the church of, you know, I'm, I'm not there. Well, you'd be not... guilty like the rest of us. I'm guilty, you're guilty, the whole of humanity is guilty. I mean, guilty. I think anything that manifests physically has something to learn, doesn't it? Yeah, but... I don't look at it as like a... It's not... <clears throat> that's such a misassociation I feel like people have made religiously. Like, it's not about, like, sin. It's a lot of ignorance. It's learning. It's it's not guilty, you know? Let me give you another perspective. Let me give you another perspective because this is what we're doing. We're looking at God's law. God's a judge. We're going through the commandments, and you're guilty like the rest of us. So in a court of law, if you said judge... Well, like if I said judge, I'll put my, myself in the dock. Judge, I'm guilty of raping that woman. Yeah, I did. Totally guilty, but I tell you I'm learning from this. Is that's good. You're going to jail. So that it, it's, not, it's not a matter of learning from violating the commandments. It's a matter of seeing that we're guilty and that we need God's mercy. So, <laughs> You're funny. Thank you. You I have appreciate. kind of an old school perspective on things. You look at it like very like, I don't know who would raise you or what experiences you've had in your own life, but... Look at it like punishment, like life isn't punishment and not being ready isn't punishment. Spiritual and conscious evolution is a beautiful process and the hard painful parts also are a beautiful process. Like I feel like the older I get and the more I understand that, you know, I've got a whole lot to learn and everything here has a whole lot to learn. It just gives you so much more compassion for everything alive. Well, at least keep learning. Do you know what the Bible says death is? What is death? Wages. Wagers? Yeah, wages. It says the wages of sin is death. God's given you death as wages for your sins. Like a judge looks at a criminal who thinks lightly of the fact that he raped three women and then murdered them. The judge says, what you did was very serious. You took human life. So I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to pay you in death for your crimes. You're getting the death sentence. This is what you've got due to you. This is what you've earned. This is your wages. And Abby, sin is so serious in the eyes of a holy God, he's given you death as wages for your sins. Capital punishment. The soul that sins it shall die. Okay. Now you might think that's funny. I don't. I'm, I care about you. I don't want you to be consumed by death. Now tell me. I'm a not one... afraid of death like you are. Well I was but I'm not now. Now let me just finish. Oh, you're not let now. me just oh no, definitely not. So Abby, if you die in your sins, you've got God's promise, you'll be damned, you'll end up in hell. That horrifies me. I don't want that to happen to you. I want to see you in heaven, not in hell. So it sounds like you've had some sort of Christian background. You talked about sin before I did. What did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell, do you know? Purgatory? Or what? Isn't that it? I'm not Say even that again? Person. I don't really know it, actually. Just give me the answer, man. Well, Jesus died on the cross for the sin of the world. Yeah. You and I broke God's law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus paid the fine. That's why he said it is finished just before he died on the cross. It is finished. The debt has been paid. You know, I'm not even a uh, Christian. I literally have just studied religion. You have? Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. 
and we're still learning today so let's keep this up and then I'll, I'll let you go because you're probably in a hurry if someone pays you fine a judge can legally let you go you can say Abby there's a stack of speeding fines here this is serious but someone's paid him you're out of here even though you're guilty you walk because someone paid your fine and even though you and I are guilty of a multitude of sins worthy of death and damnation Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood and that means God can legally dismiss our case he can let you live forever he can take the death sentence off you all because Jesus suffered and died on the cross and rose again on the third day and I can see that you've got a contemptuous attitude to the gospel but stay with it Please stay I with it. Really, I'll let you go. I'll you let you go. like this whole awesome little complex thing to really instill fear into people that don't believe in Jesus. And like, gosh, gosh don't be fearful. of people watching. I'm not fearful. You're kind of disgusting and I'm driving away on you because this is really very like you're going into like deep psychological manipulation under the idea that you think you're giving people religious enlightenment. And that I'm going to move away from your intellect, which we've been addressing, and speak to your conscience. Can you handle that? I can handle that. I'm sure you'll have a lot of heavy Bible thumpers that you have heavily manipulated because they believe in their egotistical truths and dogmatic understandings, but I'm out of here. Can I give you a couple of in and out cards before you go? Oops. Spread love. Spread love. Yeah, that's pretty good. The Evidence Study Bible will give you everything you've ever wanted to know about subjects such as the theory of evolution, as well as valuable information about the cults and different religions, atheism, and biblical archaeology. It also contains hundreds of quality quotes, fascinating articles, amazing scientific facts in the Bible, and so much more. It even includes answers to 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. The Evidence Study Bible will thoroughly enrich your trust in God and in His precious Word. Get yours at livingwaters.com.